Hi. This is not your typical parenting talk. I am not a parent. While I am perhaps old enough to be one, I'm not. I'm 18 years old, I have one brother called Jamie, and I live with my parents. Have done since the day I was born. One thing I'm becoming acutely aware of as I leave my childhood is the positive social and cultural influence I've received from my parents. They've taught me to be brave when looking out at the world, to discover things beyond my comfort zone, beyond my expectations of myself and what they were raised to believe. They say I've done the same for them too. That have helped them broaden their worldview and their reception of things like art, music, and modern culture. This is me at six years old. Now, I was never that good at getting up in the mornings, but even at this very young age, my parents had instilled within me an appreciation for classic rock. Playing it in the car, quizzing me on the artist when the song came on the radio, making me appreciate a part of culture we perhaps don't expect six-year-olds to be interested in. My dad used this to his advantage. Every morning, Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin would be played through the speakers outside my room, and every morning that it was played, I'd be up and ready for the drum solo, so that me, in my pajama state, could play air drums and rock out and end up at school on time. I think that's the first tangible moment I experienced this cultural influence from my parents, the first time I discovered a love for something thanks to them. And this discovery has continued. I have a very strong bond with my dad, and from him, I received a love of such things as old Mel Brooks movies, Indian food, and any music with guitar in it pre-1989. This is to be expected to some degree in any familial relationship, but when I start to grow up, a more unexpected thing seemed to occur. My parents became more like friends than parents. A relationship had been fostered from a very young age which made parent and child intellectual equals. And that led to reciprocal discovery. And it is a reciprocal discovery. My parents listened to slam poets and rappers because I made mixtapes for them. And I love to find myself in alien places and to travel everywhere because my mum, she's been everywhere too. And she's taken us with her either through buying the plane tickets or telling us her stories. Countless cultural discoveries have been made, and I think that's one thing that makes our family special. Our eagerness to share with each other, to fall in love with something, and want to give it back to the people we love as well. My ability to do this could be attributed to the wider nature of media today and the sheer volume of amazing things I'm exposed to, but I also think it's a product of the way I was raised as a kid. When I was young, the sky was the limit. There was nothing I couldn't do, nothing I couldn't achieve, nothing I couldn't think, nothing I couldn't try at least once. No interest was futile or pointless. If I was interested in it, it was important. And my parents took part in that with me. Uh, in contrast to that, uh, my upbringing in leafy West London in the 1960s was very much in the, the post-war mould. Um, there was very much a culture of limitation. I started school at the age of four. That's from the Sunday before I started. Definitely think that oh, my personality was similar to Louis at that young age. Um, highly intelligent, interested in everything, questioning everything, and really not sitting still for a moment. Now, regrettably, my parents and teachers kind of didn't recognise that, and I was dismissed as a, in quotes, naughty child. Um, every new pursuit, every new interest was dismissed as a craze or as a, a phase I grew out of. And this even carried on into my early adulthood. Um, an example of that would be um, having gone to sixth form college on a business studies course, excelled in everything. My parents said, no, you can't go to university. You've got to go and get a job like your dad did. Um, that kind of, well, more than kind of, it, was a, it had a profound effect on me, and it did lead to some quite dark episodes later in my life. Um, one thing that I swore in my, well, probably my late teens, was that if I ever had children, I would endeavour to put together an environment which would foster their development. And I just wouldn't hold them back. I would let them discover who they really were. 
This nurturing and accepting environment is key to the cultural discoveries you've been able to make. Without the strict discipline and pressure of a traditional parenting style, a you will do this because I told you to ethos, it's easier to create a relationship where our mistakes and harsh words are dealt with and negotiated and apologized for. Where a family can see each other as peers as well as family. This harmonious relationship was complicated when I came to a more personal discovery in the summer of 2015, when I came out as transgender. It was a situation which made cultural discovery and sharing difficult because just making my familial relationships function was difficult. In my parents' eyes, I was no longer the person they discovered these things with. And how was I sharing if I wasn't sharing this fundamental part of myself? It seemed that for the first time, we couldn't understand each other. We could no longer communicate these big concepts that pre previously characterized our interactions. And I was afraid the discovery would stop, that I would lose this precious relationship with the most precious people in my life. But, obviously, that didn't happen. We utilized one of the things we had learned in our time as a family. Our many philosophical debates on politics and morality and which Star Wars film was the best had made us rather good at talking to each other. We discussed these big and scary ideas of gender in any words we could. We put two very different worlds together to create one. Well, I could learn new things about myself as my parents learned them about me. Today, people look at me and my parents and they see something unshakable. Observing the positive social impact we've had on each other and the fact that we're happier because of it. It's how we got here. We were dancing like fools at a local concert. A concert for a band I'm arguably too young to be interested in and yes, he introduced me to. <laughs> We were screaming lyrics in each other's faces, and Claire, an organizer, saw us and thought, that's something amazing. That's something, that's something someone could make a TED talk about. And we're here because we think so too. You deserve to have this correct kind of relationship with your parents and your children. It strengthens interpersonal relationships and personal identity. It makes us more culturally aware in a society that is always fluctuating and changing and demanding acceptance for that. My world is so much bigger and brighter because my parents weren't afraid to foster my curiosity, to let me foster theirs. They created an environment that let me discover things just for the simple pleasure of seeing me be myself, of seeing me happy. And the best thing I get back from this I get to listen to them singing the songs that I showed them. And they roll down the windows in the car and scream the lyrics like they've known them their whole lives. Watching films and crying with laughter together. Crying on the bad days when we make not so kind discoveries. Building each other back up. Learning how a smile looks on two faces that are slowly aging. Two faces I've known my whole life but I'm constantly learning new things about. The best thing I get back from this, all this incessant discovery, well, I get to see them happy too. Thank you, and thank you for that. Thanks.